welcome to a key semester tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a zoom for your third person camera controller, as well as how to switch between a first person and third person perspective. This is the final part of a five video series. The four previous parts covered movement, jumping, and setting up a basic third person perspective camera. As you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. So the first thing we need to do is add some new input mapping. So we're gonna go up to edit, project settings, scroll down to input. We're going to add a new action mapping. We're gonna call this one change camera. And we're going to assign it to the mapping of V. Now we need to add a new axis mapping. And we're going to name this one zoom. And we're going to assign it to our mouse wheel. Once that's done, you can go ahead and leave your project settings and go to my character script. And we're going to want to be inside the header. And we're going to go down to private and we're going to add two new functions. The first one is going to be void zoom and we're going to give it an argument of float value. The next one is also void and it's going to be switch, but this one will have no arguments. Then we're going to need one property, so we're going to go ahead and do U property. And this is going to be a Boolean, and we're going to call it first person. And this is going to be used to tell which perspective we're currently in. So now that we've done that, we can go over to our CPP. And the first thing we want to do in here is add something to our constructor. So we're going to do first person, and we're going to default it to false. And the reason we're defaulting first person to false is because inside of our constructor, we set up a third person perspective. So our player will be starting in third person. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and go down to our inputs and we're going to bind the two new inputs we created. So we'll start with our zoom axis mapping. So we'll go ahead and do input component, bind axis. And the mapping for this was zoom and we're going to bind it to this. And then the function we want binded is a my character. And we named it zoom. And then we can go ahead and do the one for our action. And this is for switching between first and third perspective. So we're going to do input component. And this time we want to make sure to do bind action instead of access. And this mapping we called change camera. And for this, we have to give a key event. In other words, when is this action being called? And we want it to be called on pressed. So we're going to do IE pressed. And again, we want it bind to this. And then the function we want to be binding is a my character. And this function we called switch. So now that we've handled the inputs, we can go ahead and mess with our functions. Before we create the two functions, we're actually going to go to our vertical rote function that we created in the previous video because we need to handle the rotation differently, whether we're in first or third person. So we're going to need to create an if statement that checks this for us, but the insides of the two portions of our if statement will be fairly similar, except one will be adjusting the arm and the other will be adjusting the camera directly, which means that we'll need a temporary float for both of these. So instead of creating Creating a new one inside of each, we're going to go ahead and have this temp value outside of our if statement. So we'll do float temp equals zero. And then under this, we can create our if statement that's checking if we're first person or not. So again, it'll be pretty similar to what's below, except this time we'll be adjusting our camera directly. So we want to go ahead and assign that temp value. So we're going to do temp, except in this case, we're going to do cam and then get relative rotation. And again, we want it to be our pitch and we're going to add the value to it. And now we need to do our check for if we're inside our caps, the caps for this will be slightly different than our third person one. So we're going to do if temp is less than 65 and temp is greater than negative 65 then we're inside our range. And if we're inside our range, we can go ahead and add that value to our camera. So we'll do cam, add local rotation, and then we need an F rotator. 
and then we're going to do value in the pitch and zero in the other two directions. So then we need to have our else for if it's not first person, in other words, it's third person. And that's the code we wrote in the previous video, so you can just put that inside of the else part of your if statement. Now that we've done this, we can go ahead and create our other two functions. So we'll go ahead and scroll down. And we're going to start with our zoom function. So we're going to do void a my character zoom. And again, there's the float value for an argument. And just like with all our previous functions, the first thing we want to do is make sure that that value exists. And then if it does, what we're wanting to do is see what our new zoom would be, just like in the things above for rotation. And we want to make sure it's within a cap. And the reason we're doing this for our zoom is we want to be able to control what our player can see. We don't want them infinitely zooming out so they can see the whole world. And we don't want them so zoomed in that they're staring into the back of their player. So we're going to do another temporary value. So float temp. And this one is going to equal our arms target length. And then we're going to add to it the value that we're taking in. And this one's going to be multiplied by negative 10. And the reason I'm multiplying this by a negative is because whenever you move the mouse wheel forward, the value's in the positive direction, which will add to the target arm length, creating the effect of zooming out. And if you scroll the mouse wheel backwards, then the value is in the negative direction, which will cause the target arm length to be smaller, creating the effect of zooming in. To me, that was counterintuitive. I felt that it should have been the opposite. And so so by adding this negative number, I get the opposite effect. And then I'm using 10 to make the value bigger, so that way I have to do less mouse movement for more zoom. Now that we've done this, we can go ahead and check if we're inside our caps. So we're going to do if, and then the first cap I decided on was less than negative 310, and then and temp is greater than the second cap, which is 140. And if this is the case, then we want to go ahead and set that target length to our temp value. So we can do arm target arm length. I'm going to equal it to the temp value that we already calculated so we don't have to recalculate that number. So again, what this is saying is what will my arm length be if I add this value to it? Is that value inside my range that I want my player to be able to view? And if it is, go ahead and set the arm to that value. And if it's not, then do nothing. Now that our zoom function is done, we can go ahead and move on to our switch function. And again, this is allowing us to switch between first and third person. So we're going to do void a my character switch and this one had no arguments and so the first thing we want to do inside this is see which perspective we're already in so we're going to check if first person then we want to go ahead and switch to third person so we need to make sure that the arms properties are correct and that the camera is reattached to that arm so we need to do arm target arm length and we're going to set it back to that default that we had it in the constructor so that's 300 and then we want to do the rotation of the arm. So we're going to do arm set relative rotation. And this will be an F rotator with negative 45 in the pitch and zero in the other two directions, just as it was in the constructor. And the reason we're defaulting these back to what they were in the constructor is in case the last time the person was in third person, they had a different viewpoint than the base viewpoint. So that way they don't get disoriented when they switch back into third person and are looking at an odd angle. This allows us to have them go back to the default position so they're oriented and know what they're looking at. Then we want to go ahead and do the same thing with the camera by setting it back to its default position when in third person. So we're going to do cam set relative rotation and again an f rotator but this one will just be zero 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 and again we're doing this with the camera so that way if the player while in first person had an odd angle for the camera that odd angle isn't translated into the third person view and then we want to go ahead and attach our camera to our arm so attach to and then arm and more specifically just like within the constructor use spring arm component socket name and this attaches the camera to the end socket of the arm so that way we have that radius of our arm length between our character and our camera and then finally we want to make sure that first person is now false So that way we're properly keeping track of what perspective we're in now we can go ahead and do the else statement for if we're in third person when we try to switch 
So if we're wanting to switch back into first person, we want to make sure our camera is attached to our root component, which is just the center of our player. And then again, we want to make sure that we're keeping track of which perspective we're in. So we're going to do first person equals true. And now we're finally done with all of the coding for the whole series. So we can go ahead and go back to the scene. We can compile. And now that it's compiled, we can go ahead and play. And as you can see, if I move the mouse wheel inward, I zoom in. If I move it back, I zoom out. If I click V, I switch to first person. I have the cap for trying to look up in my first person and the cap for trying to look down in my first person. So as a recap, we adjusted our arm components length using the mouse wheel to allow the player to zoom in and out. We also capped that zoom on either side so that way we can control what the player is able to view. So that way they're not able to see the whole map by zooming really far out or zooming too far in and just staring into the back of their player. We also made it to where they could switch between the first and third perspective by clicking V. As always, I hope this video and series was helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments or you can join our Discord. The link for that will be in the description below. We also have other members at Key Smash that stream Monday through Thursday, and sometimes we do a group stream on Friday. So if that's something you'd be interested in checking out, the link for that will also be in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.